In this tutorial, I will show you how to create this procedural potato material in Blender. If you'd like to purchase this procedural material and also help support me and this channel, then you can purchase this material over on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. I'll have the links in the description. And if you'd like to purchase more of my materials, then you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs. So they're packs of 10 realistic procedural materials created with Blender's procedural nodes. Or if you'd like to learn how to create all of my my procedural materials, you can also check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist on YouTube. And then just one more thing before we start, I wanted to thank this video's sponsor, Sketchfab. On Sketchfab, you can upload, buy, and sell 3D models and assets. My favorite feature of Sketchfab is that you can preview 3D models online in your browser. You can also purchase models and assets from Sketchfab's model store. You can use the model inspector to preview the wireframe, matte cap, textures, and more before you purchase. Check out Sketchfab with the link below. All right, so real quick, let me just show you what I have set up in the 3D scene. So what I did here is I pressed Shift A, and I went right down here and added an icosphere. And then once I added the icosphere, I subdivided it. And then I also used Blender's proportional editing to scale this out and kind of make it the shape of a potato. It's basically just a sphere, but then I've kind of pulled it out to make it a bit longer. And then I also added a camera and pointed that at the object. Now for the lighting, I added in this plane light right here. So this is just a plane with a subsurf modifier so that it is round. And then I also gave it an emission material with a strength of 50. And then also to help get very realistic lighting and reflections, I added in this Machine Shop 02. And this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com. So the link is in the description if you'd like to download it. So when you add a new world, you can click right here on the color, click on the yellow dot, and you can click on environment texture and then you can just open up the HDRI. And I downloaded the 1K version and the HDR version. And again, this will just give us some nice realistic lighting and reflections. Now I do want the potato to be a little bit lumpy. So I am going to be using the displacements in the node editor to actually displace the mesh and make it a little bit bumpy. If I select the mesh, here's the outline of the mesh. But if I zoom in here, you can see kind of the edges are a bit bumpy and that is because of this displacement modifier. So if you wanna use the displacements in the node editor, then you you need to make sure you're using the cycles render engine because the node editor displacements won't work in Blender EV. So just make sure you are using cycles and then so that the displacement has some actual geometry to work with, just make sure your object is somewhat subdivided. So again, I just used an icosphere, so it has a lot of detail. So the displacements in the node editor can actually use this geometry to displace the mesh. So I am in the shading tab right here and I'm gonna hold down the Z button, go up into the rendered view just so that I can preview that in in the rendered view and just select your potato object. And then I have the shader editor right here. So I'm gonna click on new and I can just rename this to procedural potato. And then one more thing I need to do for the displacement settings. Now that we've added the material, I can click right down here on the material properties and you need to go right here to the settings tab. And then right here on the displacement, we wanna click on the bump only and we wanna change this to displacement and bump. And so this way we are telling the material that it can use the displacements. So I'm just gonna make this smaller, just kind of bring that in. And then I am also going to be using the Node Wrangler add-on to preview the different nodes. So if you don't have the Node Wrangler enabled, you can just click on edit and go to the preferences. And then right over here on the add-ons tab, you can just search for the Node Wrangler and then you can just check mark the Node Wrangler add-on and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So you can just close the user preferences. So I'm gonna start off by creating a texture for the base color. So I'm gonna press Shift A, let's go to the search. And I wanna search for the Musgrave texture and let's just add this in here. And then because we turned on the Node Wrangler add-on, I can control shift and select different nodes and that is going to preview the nodes on the object. And then with the Musgrave texture selected, I'm also going to press control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And then I wanna use the object coordinates. So I'm gonna take the object and I'm gonna put that into the vector of the mapping. And this way, by using the object coordinates, the texture is placed on the object more evenly. So now let's change some of the Musgrave settings to make it look more like a potato. So I'm gonna turn the scale to like a six, and then I also wanna turn the detail up so it's very detailed. So I'll turn this up to like an eight. So now it's pretty detailed. And then I wanna turn the dimension down. I wanna turn it down a lot. And if I turn it down, you can see there's much more detail and it looks much more rough. Now I don't wanna turn it down all the way to zero. So I'm just gonna turn it down to like a 0.2, but now there is a lot more detail. Now right now the texture is just 
black and white, and so I want to change those colors. So to change the colors of the texture, I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go to the search here, and I'm going to search for the color ramp, and we're just going to drop the color ramp right in here after the Musgrave texture. So now I can change the two tabs of the color ramp, and that's going to actually change the color of the texture. So I can click on the black tab, and for this one, I'm going to make this brighter, and then I'm going to make it kind of a brownish orangey color, but it is going to be a little bit yellow. And if you want to use the exact same color that I'm using, you can go over to the hex value and you can punch in 946F. 3C. So that is the exact color that I'll be using. And then for this one right over here, this is going to be kind of a brown color as well. So let's make it a little bit darker and kind of make it brown. But I do want to bring this a little bit more over to the red and I do want to make it darker. So it's kind of a brownish reddish color. And the hex value that I'll be using for this darker color is going to be 542818. So let's zoom out here and I want to take the texture coordinate and the mapping and I just want to bring these down because we are going to be using the texture coordinate and the mapping for the other textures. And I'll just bring the Musgrave and the color ramp up here. So we now have some nice detail in there. You can see there's all that little bits of detail, but I also just want to add some procedural noise and then I want to mix that into the base color. So I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for the noise texture and we are going to stick the noise texture underneath the Musgrave texture and then I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it and then just like all the textures i want to use the object coordinates so let's take the vector from the mapping and we're going to put that into the vector of the noise texture so now the noise texture is placed on the object more evenly so then let's change some of the settings here so i'm going to turn the scale to like a four and then i do want to have lots of detail so let's turn the detail up all the way to the max which is 15. and then i also want to add a little bit more roughness so i'm going to turn this roughness value to a 0.55 so there's just a little bit more roughness all right now again this is just a black and white texture and i want to change the colors to make it be the colors of a potato so i'm going to click on this color ramp and i'm going to press shift d to duplicate and i'm just going to drop this right here now i want to change these colors around a little bit i want them to be similar but i want them to be a bit different so one thing that i want to do is take this brown color this darker brown and i want to bring it out a little bit and so when i bring it closer more of the color is actually going to be that dark brown. So I'm going to bring it to about here and then I'm going to click right here on this color and I'm going to make it a little bit darker. And the hex value that I'll be using for this very dark brown is going to be 32120E. And then also for this one here, I want this one to be a little bit more towards the yellow, so I'm going to make it a bit more towards the yellowish. And the hex value that I'll be using for this lighter brown is going to be 94723B. All right, so I can control shift and select between these different nodes, and we now have these two cool textures. So I want to combine these two textures together, so I'm going to select this color ramp and then hold down the shift key and select this color ramp. So I can now press control zero and control zero is going to add this mix RGB and you can just click on the arrow to open it up and I'm going to stick it right over here. So the mix RGB is going to plug these both together and then I can change the factor value and that is going to change between each color ramp. Now I'm going to take the factor value and I'm going to turn that to like a 0.8 um, and that way it is mostly the noise but then there's also a little bit of the Musgrave as well. And I can press the B key for the box select, just box select all these nodes and I'm going to bring them back a little bit so a, there's a little bit more space. Now potatoes also usually have little dark dots so I'm going to add the little dark dots now. So let's press shift A, I'm going to go to the search and to do this I can add a Voronoi texture. So let's click on the Voronoi and I'm just going to stick this underneath the noise texture and then I can control shift and select the Voronoi to preview it. Now the scale is way too big so I'm going to make that smaller so let's turn the scale value to like a 10 so we can see those dots better and then I also want to take the vector from the mapping and let's put that into the vector of the Voronoi and that also will make the Voronoi texture smaller so we can see more of those dots. Now if you zoom in here you can see the edges are a little bit sharp so I'm going to click on the F1 and I'm going to change this to 
smooth F1. And that way it is much more smooth. So you can see those dots are much more round and smooth. Now the dots are very perfectly round and I wanna make them a bit more random and organic. So I actually wanna add a node in here to distort the placement of the Voronoi texture. And that way there'll be a little bit more noise and the dots will kinda of have a random shape. So to do this, I'm gonna press B for the box select, just box select these nodes and I can bring them over so there's a bit more space here. So I'm now going to press Shift A and let's go to the search and I'm gonna search for a noise texture and I wanna stick the noise texture right in here between the mapping and the Voronoi. So now that we've done this, the noise texture is actually distorting the placement of the Voronoi texture. And then there are a few settings that I wanna change here. So on this noise texture, let's just turn the scale to like 10. And then I also wanna give it more detail. So let's turn the detail all the way to the max, which is 15. Now this is distorting it way too much and I do wanna be able to see the Voronoi texture. So what I'm gonna do is press Shift A and let's go to the search. And I'm gonna search for the mix RGB. Let's click on this and I'm gonna drop it right in here between the noise texture and the Voronoi. So I'm now going to take the vector from the mapping and I'm gonna pull out a wire and I'm gonna put that into color one. And then this noise texture is gonna go into color two. So now if we turn the factor down, it's not going to use the noise texture at all. But then as I turn this up, the noise texture is going to affect the Voronoi more and more. Now you can see that it's moving the texture around a lot and I don't want it to be moving around so much. So I can click on the mix here and I'm going to change this instead to linear light on the mix RGB. And that way when I drag the factor, you can see this texture is pretty much staying at the same spot, but it's being distorted. Now I just want it to be distorted a tiny little bit. So I'm going to turn the factor to a 0 0.05, just a 0 0.05. And now you can see those dots are still clearly visible, but they do look very random and they're a little bit distorted and they have a lot of noise. So I now want to make these little dots more sharp and contrasty. So I'm going to press shift A, let's go to the search and I'm going to search for another color ramp. Let's click on the color ramp and I'm gonna drop it right here after the Voronoi. And you can just stick it underneath these color ramps. So I can now take the white tab and I can drag the white tab closer and you can see it's gonna sharpen up the edges. So now the dots are a bit smaller and the edges are sharper. So I'm gonna drag this way over so it is pretty close. And then I can also click on the black tab and I can drag this over a little bit so that that's a bit stronger as well. So now the dots are much more contrasty, but then most of the potato is just that white color. So I now want to mix the dots in with the color. So I'm going to select this color ramp and then hold down the shift key and select this mix. I can now press control zero and control zero is gonna add a mix RGB and it's gonna plug the selections up. So I can open the mix RGB by clicking on the arrow and I'm just gonna bring it right up here. Now for this one, I actually wanna take this color ramp and I wanna put this into the factor. So the factor value is going to tell it where it's gonna be color one and where it's gonna be color two. And then I want this mix right here to go into color two. So now this is going to make color one be the dark dot on the potato. So I can just click on color one and I'm gonna make this a darker color and I'm gonna make it a brown color. And again, if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using for those little dots here on color one, you can go to the hex value and you can punch in 49, 2F1E. So that is the color that I'll be using for those little dots there. So this is the final base color. So I can just take the color and I'm gonna stick that into the base color of the principled. And then I can control shift and select the principled shader. Now I want the texture to also control the roughness because I want the potato to be more rough, but I want some areas to be a little bit more rough and other parts to be a little bit more shiny. So I'm gonna take this second mix. I'm gonna take the color and I'm gonna stick that into the roughness. Now now it's super shiny and we don't want a super shiny potato. Potatoes are usually pretty rough. They're not very reflective. So to control this better, I'm gonna press Shift A. Let's go to the search and I can search for a color ramp and we are going to stick the color ramp right here. So now we can change these colors and that is gonna control how rough or shiny it is. So I can click on the black tab and I can click here on the color and I can turn this up. And you can see as I turn it up, it's gonna make the potato much more rough. 
So I'm just going to make this kind of a light brown color, and I'll be using a hex value of A7, A7, A7. So now the potato is much more rough, but it still is a little bit shiny. Now this potato is very smooth, and potatoes usually are a little bit rough. They have a little bit of roughness and bump on the surface. So I'm going to be adding some values into the normal to give it some bump over the surface. So I'm going to start with this noise texture because I want to add a little bit of noise all over the potato. So I'm going to take the factor from the noise texture and I'm going to pull out a wire and I'm going to stick that into the normal. Now you can see there's some weird shading issues. There's like these dark areas and that's because we need to convert this color data into normal data. So to do this, I'm going to press a shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for a bump node and we can just click on the bump node and I'm just going to stick it right here in this wire. So now the noise texture texture factor can go into the height value of the bump and that way it's going to convert it to normal data and then the normal can just go into the normal. So now you can see that potato looks very bumpy. Now this is way too bumpy so I'm going to take the strength value and I'm going to turn this way down to like a 0.15. Just a 0.15 so if I zoom in there now you can see there is a little bit of a texture there's a little bit of noisy bump there but it's not too strong. All right, now if I control shift and select this color ramp, I also wanna add these little dots here into the bump to make those dots just a little bit bumpy. So I'm gonna control shift and select the principal shader again. So I can select the bump node and I'm gonna press shift D to duplicate it. And I'm gonna stick this right after the first bump. So the first bump has already converted this to normal data. So the normal can just go through the normal. So we now have this extra height value that we can add data into. So I'm gonna take the color from this color ramp. I'm gonna pull out a wire and I'm going to plug this into the height value of the second bump. And then if I make this stronger, you can see what it's doing. So now it's making that very bumpy. I don't want it to be that strong though. So I'm just going to keep the strength value at 0.15. I think 0.15 is pretty good. And then I also want to invert it. I'm just going to click on the invert button because if you zoom in there to the bumps, if it's not inverted, those bumps look like they're going back in a little bit. So I'm going to check mark the inverted and that way the bumps look like they're coming out just a little bit. And then I also want to take the final base color and I want to put that into the normal as well. So I'm going to click on this first bump and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it and I'm going to stick it right here after these first two. So again the normal can just go through the normal so I can now take the second mix here. I'm going to take the color and I'm going to stick that into the height value. And then I do want to make it pretty subtle. If I zoom in there you can see there's the noise taking effect but I do want it to be even more subtle. So I'm just going to turn the strength value of this last bump to just a 0.1. So now you can see we have some nice bump there all over the potato. All right, so this is definitely starting to look like a potato, but I do want to make the potato kind of lumpy. So that is where the displacement comes in. So we are going to plug some data into the displacement to actually displace the mesh. So to do this, I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go to the search here, and I'm going to search for another noise texture. Let's click on the noise texture, and I'm just going to stick it right down here. And then I can Control Shift and select the noise texture to preview. It. Now again, I want this texture to be placed very evenly on the object. So I'm going to go right over here to the mapping and I'm going to pull out a wire from the vector and then I'm going to bring my mouse over and I'm going to stick that into the vector of the noise texture. And then let's play around with some of the settings. So I just want this noise texture to give some really big lumps to actually displace the mesh. So I'm just going to turn the scale value to like one. So that way there are just some big lumps of color. So I can now take the factor value from this noise texture. I'm going to pull Pull out a wire and I'm going to bring this up here and stick it into the displacement value on the material output and then I can control shift and select the principled shader. So you can see it's doing something but it's really weird it's kind of being displaced out to the side and that is because this is color data but then this needs to be displacement data. So we need a node in here to convert the color data to displacement data. So let's press shift A. Let's go to the search here and I'm going to search for the displacement displacement node and I'm going to stick the displacement node right here in this wire and I can just bring it down. And then to actually convert it to displacement data, we want to take the noise texture factor. We could actually bring this over and let's take the noise texture factor and I'm going to put that into the height value instead. So now it is displacing the mesh and we need to make this much more subtle. So we can take the scale value and we can turn that down to make it more subtle. So I'm just going to turn the scale value to like a 0.15 
I'm just going to do a 0.15. So now it is displacing the mesh. If you look around here, you can definitely see there's some little lumps in the potatoes, but it is much more subtle. And then also, if I zoom out here, you can see this wire going from the mapping to the noise texture. It's overlapping on all these nodes. So what I'm going to do is hold down the shift key, and then I'm going to right click and drag and drag a line over the wire and then let go. And this is going to add what's called a reroute. And this isn't actually going to change how the material looks, but I can just bring the reroute over. And that way this wire is going to go down and then over and there won't be any overlapping. So it just kind of makes the material look a bit nicer. And then I can also press B for the box select, just box select these nodes, and I can bring them a bit closer just to kind of make that a bit smaller. So this is looking a lot like a potato, but I do just want to add a tiny little bit of subsurface scattering to allow just a little bit of light to go through the potato, and it'll just make the potato look a little bit more soft and make it look a little bit more like food. So if I zoom in here to the principled shader, I'm going to take the subsurface value and I'm going to make this a very small value of 0.03. So just 0.03, so it is going to be pretty subtle, but you can see it's kind of white looking. So I can now take the subsurface color right here, and I'm going to make this kind of a yellowy orangey color. And if you want to use the same subsurface color that I'm using over here on the hex value, you can punch in E7 8B19. So I think that subsurface really helps. It just makes it look a bit more soft and makes it look much more organic and natural. And it looks more like food with just that little bit of subsurface. So that is the procedural material. Although there is just one more thing that I want to do. I want to be able to duplicate the potato object and have the textures kind of be randomized a little bit and kind of have the displacement be randomized a little bit as well. And that way, if I just like duplicate the potato, then the potatoes will look a little bit different. So to do this, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go to the search and I'm going to search for the object info node and I'm going to put the object info node right here under the texture coordinate and I can also bring the texture coordinate up. So I can now take the random value from the object info and I can stick this into the location of the mapping. And so this way the random of the object info is going to randomly change the location of the mapping and the mapping is plugged up to all of these different textures. So that way each time Time I duplicate this potato object, it's going to randomize the placement of the textures, and it's also going to randomize the placement of this noise texture, and that will change the displacement. And what you could also do is duplicate the potatoes, and then in edit mode with the proportional editing on, you can select some vertices and just kind of play around with the shape to make each potato just look a little bit different. So that's it for this tutorial, so I hope you found this helpful, and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to help support me and this channel, as well as purchase the material, then you can get that over on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, I'll have the links in the description. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my materials. And if you'd like to learn how to create any of my materials, then you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist on YouTube. And if you enjoyed this video, and you'd like to give me a little tip, you can send a super thanks underneath this video here on YouTube. I do really appreciate your support, but I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you for watching.